does just amaze me how many people want to say I am an amazing manager and yet so few are willing to actually put the hard yards in and actually set themselves up to be a good manager. So this article really caught my eye. Um, how to win over your boss. Now, I'm going to walk you through the kind of findings from it because I do find it interesting and I do agree with what, a lot of what it says. However, in true Ben style, I'm going to flip it on its head because I think this gave me a great idea to talk about not how to win over your boss, but how your boss can win over you. And I'm going to break that down into five kind of key areas that you can do so. But this article is interesting. I think I think it's kind of quite obvious, but I think it's interesting because they've actually done a proper experiment to kind of confirm what we probably already thought. Um, and the premise is pretty straightforward. If you want to win over your boss's approval, you kind of, when you highlight your own accomplishments, you want to do it in the context of highlighting other people as well. Because, you know, one, it makes you come across as a team player, but basically it just kind of shows your boss, basically, and look, what if, I mean, this, I mean, this is so funny, right? It's amazing how often and these types of kind of workplace culture things come down to this. But it basically means your boss likes you, right? And if you're a likable person, you are more liked and therefore more respected. That's just a kind of a fact of life, like forget work. And so basically what it's saying is if you highlight your own accomplishments alongside your colleagues, you're more likely to be liked and respected by your boss, um, which does make sense, right? Um, but they did an experiment where they had 1,400 participants and basically 200 hiring owners read about two colleagues who completed a joint project and evaluated themselves. And this is kind of what came down to the premise. However, I'm not going to talk about that today. What I'm going to talk about is how, as a boss, you can win over your team. Um, and I've broken this down into kind of five key points. Um, and the first is to be respectful. And what I mean by that is I don't obviously treat them with respect as a person. That kind of goes without bloody saying. So I'm not going to sort of bang on about that. But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about their time, being respectful of their time, basically being as respectful of their time as you want them to be of yours. And what I mean by that is don't be 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes late to meetings when they're sitting around waiting for you. And if you are a little bit late for a meeting, apologize, like treat it seriously. Don't kind of act like it's your God given right just to show up, rock around, you know, pretend that it's okay just to swan in and out and just do everything like that. So you have to be respectful of people's time because it's just not right you know and people will then will just get hacked off they'll get a bit miffed and their only sort of reason why they can't actively tell you is because you're more superior to them and basically any scenario in which your rank and your status is the only reason why people aren't calling you out you're doing a bad job as a manager that's a really nice little rule for you if you want to be a boss or a manager of any tour so be respectful of times especially around meetings if you book time in let people know you know be there on time um so that's point number one Point number two is to be transparent. So when I say transparency, I don't mean honesty, because again, like this is the point, like I'm kind of assuming if you want to be a good boss, you have to be basic humanity, right? So be kind, all that sort of stuff. But when I say be transparent is tell them what's going on. Tell them what's going on in the business. Tell them what's going on in the department. Are we doing well? Are we doing badly? If we're doing well, is that good for us? Why is that good for us? What could that potentially lead to opportunity-wise for people? If it's going badly, what does that mean? Is there a danger of people being let go? Is there thing we can do to help and all that sort of thing? Because if you're being transparent, it shows you respect them enough and people really buy into that. So if you just hide your cards and don't tell them anything that's going on. People, one, likely to assume the worst, which is a very human response, very natural. But two, it just feels like you don't trust them. Whereas if you, if you show them the maturity and treat them like adults and actually say, look, this is going on, this is great for us for this, this and this, and this could be an opportunity and we'll keep you posted and if there's anything you'd like to explore and all of that, then fantastic. But also if it's going bad, it's okay to tell that as well. Look, I'm really sorry, we might have to reduce the budget for the Christmas party because of X, Y and Z. You know, we're struggling with this, we're a bit worried here. Like, you know, any ideas to how to, support, you know, include people in this because you'll be amazed at how much more value add people one people add because they come at this from another angle and they might give some really good insights which has absolutely happened to me in the past but two people just respond better to that they just feel a bit more trusted they feel a bit more valued and they just feel it brings that sort of team courage of actually we're in this together whether positive or negative um, and people way respond way better um, you know, the worst thing you can do is pretend everything's hunky dory when because people aren't idiots. This is my people can tell when something's going badly. And so if you're the type of manager says, "Oh, we're doing really well and it's profit," one people worried that you're just losing your mind. You haven't got a clue what's going on, which is often likely the case. And two, people just call your bullshit, right? It's just nonsense. So really important point that one. Um, and one of the things I really try and input as much as possible. You know, no one's perfect, but it's something I personally try and do a lot more of than I used to. Certainly, the next one is to be thoughtful. So what I mean by that is think about your status and think about what that brings. So for example, if you put a meeting in someone's diary and don't tell them what it's about, that can scare the crap out of people. And that is because it can be quite, if your boss puts a meeting, if people are going to assume the worst, they might be fired. So that's a really good specific example of what being thoughtful 
means. Think about what your actions might do and how that might impact other people. If you ask for a report, is that loads of extra hours? Have you checked how much work that is? If you sort of change direction, is that cancelling out loads of work and sort of demoralising people because they've been working for ages on one specific thing? Like, think about what your actions, how they might, yes, think about how they might impact the business. But ultimately, if you're impacting the employees and your team negatively, that's going to impact the business as well. So it's really important you think about it. And if you do change direction, again, going back to that transparency angle, be upfront about it. Explain why you've had to do this. Again, people respond so much better than if people just sort of randomly cancel something or reduce something or anything like that without being told why. So another really important one, and one that is criminally underrated um, as, a, as a leadership quality. The next one, I'm going to call it be understanding. So life trumps work. Life should always trump work. Whatever job you're in you can love your job and I really hope you all do but life is always more important and inevitably when stuff happens in life your work gets impacted now when that happens as a manager and as a boss you have a choice you have a choice you can either make things better for them or you can make things worse you can either support them cultivate them help them out you know give them advice give them free reign give them extra things to kind of support and get them through it or you can be that boss who just sort of expects that whatever happens as soon as you walk through the doors nothing exists on the outside because let me tell you if you are in that second camp you are an awful human being and I really mean that because it's so inconsiderate and so ridiculous ridiculous to expect that people should then just sort of absolutely oh just oh it's fine you know just you know I don't care if you're someone's sick or if you're going through trouble with your relationship or you're worried about your kids or you're worried about money and all that sort of thing no you just got to get here and grind up because it's so idiotic and I'll explain why it's idiotic because if someone's demotivated and you know and struggling and worried do you think they're doing their best job Obviously not. Like this is so. This is why I mean it's so. When I talk about how to get your team to respect you, this is for your benefit. This isn't just to like be a good person, though. You know, I'd like to think that was also an incentive. This is actually for your benefit because it creates a higher performing, higher valued, higher engaged team, which inevitably helps you out, right? Because if your team's more involved and more engaged, they do better work, which means your department or your company does better. Like it's so obvious this stuff. And so if you're going to genuinely expect people to leave everything at the door and just get on with it you're deluded right and so if stuff happens one you need to create an environment where people can actually tell you or tell people in your company depending on how large you are t tell people what's going on and give them the freedom to actually act and give people support and two you've just got to be realistic right no job is more important than life of course not and so you've got to take that seriously and then finally i'm going to it's an interesting one for the last one i'm going to say it's called be fair now People too often misunderstand the difference between equality and fairness because in doing so, they become weirdly heartless. And it's the phrase that everyone uses to kind of justify why they're doing this. And it's this, if I do this for you, I have to do it for anyone. Now, that is so silly because look, a good company will do this. They'll give broad stroke guidance on what people can and can't do. And then they'll incentivize and empower your managers to actually give a little bit leeway here and there. Because sometimes it's okay to give people slightly preferential treatment for unique circumstances. If people are going through something terrible and you want to give them an extra bit of support, it's okay to not then roll it out as a company policy. Do you see what I mean? Like if it's a great thing to do, then fab, roll it out as a company policy. But this idea that, oh, I can't do this one tiny, tiny thing that might make your current situation a tiny bit better because then everyone's going to ask for it. It's, like, it's so ridiculous because you can say no to everyone else because they don't fundamentally need what you're offering this person. So if it's an extra sick day, if it's a, do you, do you see what I mean? Like you can use context and circumstance to make a good judgment call and a good manager should do that and use their initiative to actually do that. And that kind of, it, it, you have this sort of um, broken system where, companies are really rigid and don't let managers do anything at all and then managers don't feel empowered to actually then sort of flex their muscles a little bit and say actually I'm going to do this extra thing for this person if you're going to have issue with you know caught me to me and I'll be able to justify it do you see what I mean so it's a really interesting point and one that I sort of really am thinking a lot about at the moment because it's all down to like process a lot of people would like to help people but then they sort of go oh, I'm not allowed to and all that sort of thing and I, I find that so weird right these things are often so small but can make the world a difference to individuals and so I really do struggle with the logic that companies just go oh no if I do that I have to roll it out for everyone it's like no you don't you can explain to someone oh and if someone says oh why do you help this person not me it's like well actually this person really needed it for x y and z really interesting um article prompted um a, a nice kind of thought in my head which I wanted to share with you all um, but as ever please do let me know what you think uh, and if there's anything else you want me to talk about thanks very much